as we just talked about, uh, you know, bringing mainnet into the enterprise, what that looks like, how that process has gone, some of the lessons learned, we're now going to get to this part of our program where we're going to be talking about baselining or the baseline protocol and going further into some of those use cases that are working or about to begin launching and the mindset uh, along with a framework that John and York, Paul and others had talked about previously have put together to make this a lot smoother of a process uh, for all of you as well. Uh, and so with that, John, I do want to turn it over to you. I think we may have one more. So I'm going to let you go ahead and take us off. Um, and I'll hang on for a minute, let the last person in and then jump. But without further ado, Daniel, John, George, Stefan, Kyle, welcome. The floor is yours, John. Well, hi, everybody. It's good to see you. Uh, it's not like I don't see you every day on the, on the Slackiverse. And um, so, but uh, it's good to see you all. Uh, we got Star Lord here, uh, Kyle Thomas, um, and uh, Stefan Schmidt uh, from Unibright, uh, George Spasa from LimeChain, and Daniel Norkin from uh, Envision Blockchain. Welcome, you guys. Um, hey, John. Thanks for having us here. Well, I just want to say that um, there are there are a lot of other people who exemplify and and uh, the 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 sense of profound teamwork that the baseline protocol community has um, uh, achieved in what eight weeks of existence, ten weeks maybe. Um, and but but I think you, you guys are a good group of people to speak for them. I mean, we're seeing this across. Many different projects, from you know the upcoming Google Sheets uh, demo, where you can Google, you know, where you can uh, 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 baseline a, a Google Sheet uh, uh, spreadsheet to your partner's enterprise system of record, like Dynamics, uh, to uh, Unibright and Dynamic uh, and, and SAP and Dynamics, uh, work, you know, integrating uh, through baselining, and so many other projects. Um, can you guys talk about how, I mean, none of you guys work in the same company and yet you're working in one team. How, how, how is that going? And what are the, what, what do you think are the, are the ways that that that's working and, and, and uh, uh, how are you putting that to work? I think we, we just decided all to see ourselves like a rock band and that makes it easier. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> kind of, kind of, kind of true. I think, um, yeah, I think that the starting weeks of baseline uh, greatly show also what open source is about and what teaming up is about. And um, uh, the first demo that uh, we now put up um, here is for perhaps the first example for, for great teamwork. I mean, in the end, it's all different companies that somehow contribute to baseline and all of these may have their own strategies in terms of uh, products or services they want to place or um, some points they want to make in the public blockchain space. Uh, but um, the example that we showed is an integration uh, example, integration project using the mainnet as uh, yeah, understandable as middleware. And if you talk about integration, then it just makes no sense if you just do it on your own. So you have to team up um, to make the real integration work, not only on a technical level, but also on um, integrating different players in an ecosystem. And I think this is what happened here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I second that, and uh, it's important that for the for the last couple of years, and and then John and the people that were in the uh, in the previous talk, they mentioned this. A lot of companies were like playing around, but were not willing to go first. And now we are actually all all the companies that we are collaborating here. We are actually seeing here that we might just have hit gold, and there is something that's very interesting here that actually can be usable and can actually be integrated in a real world working business and actually add the, 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 the exponential value that is, that is there. And I mean, I guess it's no brainer for you to be part of this way as a business, as an, as an individual. So at least for me, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. And I guess I'll just chime in here too, and just kind of taking turns here, answering your specific question, John. I think that a key with really any project, you know, you're collaborating with, you know, many different companies, everyone has different ambitions, everyone has different things. It's just like that within any sort of organization, right? Where good communication, establishing different roles, who's gonna take care of what, where are we gonna communicate, how are we gonna communicate, use what we have at our disposal. 
I think that this is really some of some of the key lessons learned here. Yeah, I think it, to add to that, you know, I think it, it speaks a lot to the the way that the um, the founding members uh, came together, you know, like w and who they were. Um, very complementary uh, skill sets, um, and, and that's sort of we're, we're seeing that um, evidenced. And uh, I guess you know, k kudos to to, to John and the S and, and uh, everyone that, that put that together. Yeah, I'd like to push more on so this notion of openly governed open source. And, and so we should probably say that the you know, the baseline protocol, which is uh, baseline hyphen or baseline dash protocol dot org, um, is uh, an openly governed open source um, public domain uh, 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 group that is or the, the uh, initiative that is run by the Oasis uh, uh, Open Standards Body, which is one of the most venerable old. It is the oldest, in fact, of the major um, uh, standards and open source organization, uh, Oasis, which is, I think 20 years older than both of those. Um, and they're running, you know, so that's the, the group that's running the whole thing. So uh, when I was, uh, uh, many years ago, I used to work with a guy named, uh, Hank Chesbro, who's the guy that wrote the book, open innovation. Uh, he's at Berkeley and, uh, professor there. And, and I keep on thinking about all the things we used to think about, uh, uh, back then about open innovation, how companies that are, you know, legally separate could work together. And here we are, um, doing that in an open source, openly governed way. Right. So I think, um, Kyle, you're on the ETS, the technical steering committee, Stefan and Daniel and George, you're on the, er, on the, uh, uh, specification steering committee. How is that working for you? Uh, Kyle, you, you, I'll, I'll start with you on this because I, and I, and I think you're, you're an exemplar of this. You seem to be have a knack of being helpful to everybody. Everybody wants to work with you. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's just a culmination of a lot of a lot of hard work um, and being and a, and a little bit of good timing, um, you know, and and uh, you know, not to uh, to sort of to sort of hit on um, Paul's point. You know, you don't want to you don't want to be doing everything, but it's just every the, the base this baseline uh, project has really aligned with. Um, some of the investment that you know that, that has been made by provide and, and myself over the last you know the last few years and um you know it just it just made so much sense uh to become a part of this community um and and to contribute in this way i mean I, i'm very humbled to be here uh, i'm very excited to work with everyone um and i'm just it's a great time i want to see um i want to see the things succeed and it's on the right track daniel you you've also been uh, and you you were one of the groups both you and stefan uh, and by the way, thank you, Kyle. It was uh, uh, you and Stefan did something quite interesting. You brought in um, your partners. I mean, you're both you, uh, Daniel. You're the you're a Microsoft. Uh, your company's a Microsoft partner. Um, Stefan, your your company is an SAP partner, if I understand it correctly. Um, and and you you know can you so that the the press release for the baseline event or the the baseline release that we just released with uh, Dynamics and uh, SAP headline dynamics in SAP, which I think was a wake up call for people, right? That suddenly we're saying, Hey, more baselining, more blockchain means more SAP, more dynamics. Which is just um, more boring, right? This, yeah. So can you say, how, how did you guys bring them along and what did you do? Did you, did you involve them? Did you need to? Daniel? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll talk about it from 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 the Microsoft side, right? Obviously, you know, within the steering committee, we have other other Microsoft uh, representation like York, who was just speaking at the previous uh, you know uh, presentation, and you know, there's there's certain areas where we see that there are a lot of customer pain points, and you know, one of the things that we wanted to showcase, obviously. With the baseline protocol, the pattern that we keep talking about, one of the main things is the system of record. So, you know, kind of digging deep and looking into where are these enterprise customers, right? They are on their ERP systems. So they're on the SAP side, they're on the Dynamics 365 side, you know, and then there's other systems as well. You know, for example, George is taking care of, right, the Google spreadsheets, but that's just a testament to what can be done for companies of all sizes really to collaborate all together, not within the baseline protocol, but I mean, in terms of doing business and some of the interesting things, and I'll just put um, a link here in the chat. 
Um, some of the interesting things that we see here on this um, on the specifications steering committee is these epics and the roadmaps of all the projects that everybody in the community wants to put together, right? So for anyone that wants to go and check this out, click that link, it goes right to the roadmap. Um, and you could see, you know, just outside of the world of the Microsoft and SAP and the Googles, where else, you know, some of the interesting, uh, I guess, thought leadership is coming from. Yeah. Stefan? Yeah, if, I, if I may uh, add, all, all of this uh, also holds true for uh, for the experience that we made at Unibride. Our history is uh, very much based in business integration and bringing new technologies to customers. And most of the customers in our um, background coming from Germany um, have been SAP customers as well. And um, I think the storytelling, for example, if you if you take a look at the Unibride perspective, uh, we claim ourselves to be um, business integrators and bringing enterprises closer to blockchain. And in the last three years, it was mainly about um, convincing two different audiences uh, that this actually makes sense. There's one audience that truly believes in the in, in blockchain as a uh, as a technology, but also as a concept. But they perhaps uh, underestimate the fact that um, systems of record that have been in place for say 20 years and costs million of dollars that they will not be switched over to from a centralized system to purely distributed system working on blockchain within some weeks. So we um, always followed the narrative that um, it, when it makes sense to use the blockchain for a specific integration process, for example, between SAP and other systems, you should follow that path. And with um, the baseline protocol, we have the feeling that the missing link in this narrative is finally there because it has always been about arguing on private blockchains versus public blockchains. And, um, oh, why, why shouldn't I use just my database? It's way faster. All these arguments that all of us heard over and over again finally um, yeah, don't count anymore or not, not that, uh, are not that important anymore if you just understand a mainnet as a always on middleware or magic bus or whatever. Ever, uh, however we call it. And then in the end, it's just keeping the users in their domain that they're used to. They can still use their ERP system. They can still be domain specialist in whatever, selling selling beer in Germany or whatever their profession is. Uh, and then making use of a new technology that um, actually brings them some, some benefit. And uh, I think Baseline just came at the right, right point to support that storytelling. Awesome. Uh, and George, let me put a special twist on this for you. I mean, because, and this is interesting for, for my, me and my company, uh, Consensus, uh, which is a product company, right, in uh, uh, infrastructure and asset management. So our question is always about enablement and licensing. How can we get guys like you guys to use our products in your integrations? And you've done this with a particularly interesting um, space that you're about to announce. Um, with a Google Sheet, yeah, right, yeah. Um, so, can you say more about that? I know that the press release is coming out, but you know, we're all friends. Yeah. Well, unlike Dan and and Stefan, I have absolutely no previous experience in developing against Google Sheet. But this is like a testament to how, like, how architecturally sound baseline is, and with the with the with the help of uh, of Kyle and the rest of the team, actually. You could just pick up a, any client that you want and make it a baseline client to, to your baseline service. So it is it is very um, it is very easy. And uh, I, I, I'll go one uh, back to your previous question, like what is it to to be part of the of the SEC? Uh, I, I'd like to say that I appreciate it a lot because there is a wide variety of people that are giving their input into into what. Uh, Use cases needs to be there. What uh, what are important technologies to integrate with, to um, to to interface with, like your EDIs and stuff like this. And and this spirit of collaboration and actually having a real world input actually uh, gave us the perspective to actually talk with some of the people that we want to integrate. And uh, this is where the the story came out with the with the Google Sheets where. Uh, we had the chance to speak with several smaller manufacturers that are actually interfacing with a lot bigger manufacturers. But because they're smaller manufacturers, they don't have the 
uh, like the, the huge ERP, they don't have the need of this ERP, they don't, don't have the financial power to integrate this ERP and to support this ERP. And they have something much more simple, something that like everyone has used a certain point and this is the good old spreadsheet. So uh, instead of like cutting these people out of the baseline uh, and, and out of the uh, all the value chain that we are adding with the, with the blockchain, uh, uh, we got into the thinking, hey, like these are very valuable players in all of this. Uh, if their data is not part of the whole this uh, uh, whole this notion, if it's not referenced, it is not uh, checked, if it's not on record, well, we're going to have a lot of missing data there. So how can we actually add, it, add them there? And this is where the spreadsheet integration uh, idea came into place. And we are super excited because next week you're going to see more, you're going to uh, be able to read more. And yeah, so I'm not, I'm not saying any more. Well, that was wonderful. And, and yeah, and so I, I like this idea a lot. And I think, Kyle, you're working on yet another uh, progression of this, right? So you're seeing this roadmap we start with. You know, uh, show, you know, showing the base um, procurement demo of what you can do with baseline, right? Just saying, okay, I've got a master service agreement and uh, I've got a rate table for discounting and I need my purchase orders to come in verifiably consistent. Um, and I don't wanna put all of that on a public or private blockchain where, because my data should be in my ERP system and your ERP system, I wanna be able to just say, my my record is verifiably identical to your record, and that the workflow that we're pro, that we're pro, uh, proceeding through to make changes to those records and add new records is done in a in a in a state of con con continuity, where we all know that each workflow step is um, is done correctly. That that if there's a new baseline proof on the mainnet, that means that if you and I are in on the secret about that proof, nobody uh, yeah you know, we know that. The, the what got that proof there was done correctly, right? Without, you know, so I, I like to think of this like zero knowledge proofs, right? The zero knowledge proof is I'm gonna prove to you that I have a secret without telling you what the secret is. This is, we're gonna prove to each other that we have the same secret without telling the middleware we need to do, use to do that, anything about our secret and do it in such a way that anybody looking at, the, at that, uh, that middleware wouldn't know that we even had a secret. Right. So if you have that, then, yeah, if it's always standing up, you can you can take these small companies and the big companies. You don't have to just um, work with your largest partners. And I think, George, that's what's exciting about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, Kyle, you want to talk about completing that picture with the whole DocuSign idea? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's really, really cool because all of these uh, initiatives are have been very, very focused on getting uh, baseline uh, the protocol, you know, like everyone, when we, when we started this thing, it was, you know, we had the Radish 34 use case and how do we generalize and abstract that into a protocol? Uh, and all of these, all of these demos and, and projects and integrations um, that, are, you know, that we're all working on. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, you know, like uh, the SAP, you know, ERP integrations, huge. Um, DocuSign and the spreadsheets integration, huge. What's really cool, though, and, and what, you know, what's really well aligned is it's all building off towards this, you know, the one work stream to solve, you know, to, to solve them all. Uh, and that's, you know, essentially to, uh, to, to make baseline the protocol uh, something that can be deployed uh, in production. You know, and that's, um, that's, that's a, a pretty bold statement, uh, you know, because it's, it's a lot of work. Um, we, we're, we've made so much progress, you know, just in, in the last few months. Um, you know, there, there's no reason why, uh, we, you know, we won't see production, uh, you, you know, real enterprise production uh, use uh, baseline this year. That's partly because it's a technique. You know, one of the things that, that we should probably talk about is that the baseline protocol is not a platform. It's not a product. It's not a chain. It's not a token. It's not a scheme. It's not a business model. It is simply a technique for um, using the public <laughs> mainnet Really, any kind of standard, standard yeah. do, right? But the, the whole point is doing this with this public mainnet, so that you couldn't, so you don't have to set up your own, you know, a, a MQ series or you know some some other system, right? Every every time you have a partner, um, yeah. And Boy. as a technique, does that help you guys work together? Because you know that your product, your platform, is the platform, not baseline. Baseline is not a platform. That's an interesting question. Um, I don't know if it helps. Us work what does that mean, product? Product? Yeah. Company? Like 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 SAP or like uh, like Google like like Microsoft. 
Yeah, I, I think it goes in the same. The answer is just in the same direction what, what George um, explained. Like in the end, in integration processes, it's about integrating them all because if not, it's not an integration uh, project. And yeah. um, therefore, it's also very good to have a set of, uh, let's call it standards or maybe patterns or even if it's just a technical way of communicating, every standard helps to establish uh, a common frame of reference that all can rely on and um, for me personally from coming from the unibride space the um, to distinguish between what's on protocol level and what's on product level it's simply that all or everybody uh, can work on the protocol to make it as as feasible as possible and then adapt their own solutions or consulting or products or whatever um, to be um, compliant with with a with a pattern that all agreed on and the more examples that we build together, the more we will be able to extract parts from these examples to say the protocol level because it has everybody or to work on something that our products do better than other products perhaps to have our own niche in the market. And that's where uh, the business model comes in, but it should not be on the protocol level. It should be on the level of those who use the protocol. Right on. Yeah. So, Daniel, you had, um... You, let me let me ask you this question. Um, you know, so uh, there was a good question in the in the in the chat. Uh, Reginald Fonseca says, you know, what are the benefits of tokenizing assets with baseline protocol? And of course, up until now, the the uh, hey Karthik, Karthik from uh, Ernst Young, everybody, uh, one of the uh, founding uh, uh, lead engineers uh, and, and and architects of uh, of of the original baseline protocol uh, stuff, and on the technical steering committee. Um, so Karthik, you came in just in time. So let's talk about, I mean, really perfectly in time, because I know how passionate you are on this subject. Subject is tokenizing assets with the baseline protocol. And so we've been talking about the roadmap. And the roadmap, um, you know, it, I, I love this roadmap because it's so clean. Can do this, now we can do this, now you can do this. And each one is showing up as a demo with some major brand name like Microsoft, SAP, Google, uh, DocuSign, et cetera. Um, uh, maybe ultimately codify and consensus, right? Where and uh, I'm hoping that co co uh, consensus codify, which is an asset management tool, will be uh, featured in the invoice tokenization uh, demo, right? So in the, in the, in this situation, um, can you talk about the progression? Right now, we're talking about just baselining documents. We're not talking about tokenizing them. You don't tokenize an a, a RFP or master service agreement or really even a PO, but you might tokenize an invoice because now ownership of that invoice can turn into factoring into selling uh, short-term commercial debt or doing like what uh, a very interesting company uh, um, uh, uh, centrifuge is doing with tin lake where they're where they're turning uh, invoices into collateralization from MakerDAO, which i thought was quite interesting so karthi can you can you and daniel perhaps talk about um the progression towards that and what we need to do to get there uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so one of the things that we've been looking into uh, in general is, uh, from a baseline perspective, trying to make the specification as uh, general as possible, so to speak, not general in the sense of a, a, a new token standard or anything of that extent, but more so to say that every enterprise system or every legacy system has a way to uh say uh baseline or make documents consistent so we are different uh different organizations may use different proofs or a different set of validating conditions to say uh, in, to affect in a, a particular business process so in that sense uh if we talk about the case of invoicing any triggers that would lead to the generation of invoice is still somewhat subject to say enterprise or legacy needs or legacy requirements However, uh, when it comes to baseline, uh, what we are trying to uh, uh, envision is how can such uh, documents or uh, objects can be vision uh, can be visualized as uh, monetary uh, monetary instruments of financial value or of economic value. So that's where uh, the notion of invoice factoring comes in, where in procurement cases we've seen or we've observed or we see that put, uh, potential where invoices could be used as denominational tokens of transaction, either to raise capital or to uh, seek debt or create new debt obligations and so on. And uh, given that... If you don't mind me interrupting there, Karthik, you don't, you don't 
you know, throw your invoices on the main net to make a market for them and, and let your competitor know everything about your invoices. Yes. Right. So what about baselining allows you to be both private and stealthy, but still make a market on the public network? Um, pretty much extending the core principles of how we baseline a document where we do not want to expose the attributes involved within a document object, as well as the uh, logical changes or transformations that happen to that object in the process of creating that baseline document. We undergo that through a series of uh, uh, quote-unquote hardening by creating like a zero-knowledge proof-based circuit, which could be verified off-chain, sorry, which could be created, uh, uh, generated off-chain and verified both on and off-chain, but we verify it on-chain more so for uh, visibility and uh, demonstrable uh, verifiability. Uh, so the same concepts of privacy in principle extend to uh, token as well. So the triggers that would affect in creating a baseline document would uh, similarly apply in principle to creation of a token or creation of an invoice object. The idea is how would Which is just a hash, right? To the main, yeah, it's, a, it's a hash that was put down in a certain way. Um, uh, yeah. that, that multiple parties definitely have identically the same invoice, right? Uh, sure, yeah. In loose uh, terms or in high level terms, yes, it's a hash, but there's all mechanics of how that hash is generated, where it's stored, right. how it is merkelized, and so on and so forth. But uh, otherwise, yes. The that goes of into a, a shield contract, right? Into a zero knowledge and uh, Merkle tree. Yes. And and from there, what you can you can take that and transfer basically use it as the thing you transfer, mm -hmm. so that when people look at it, even if you had access to the ledger, which you do, of course, you're seeing somebody moved something to somebody, and it means nothing to anybody other than than the person that bought it and the person that sold it. Is that is that more or less yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's the that's the vision. Uh, yeah. So I think that yeah, you struck up on a point where we are looking at um, uh, other potential collaborators from the DeFi community is something where an invoice or as an example uh, can manifest itself as a DeFi token or a DeFi instrument. That's where we see the, uh, or that's where we will, uh, that's where some of us are trying to focus on to see how we can progress the concept of not just taking ERP data, but also tokenizing that directly using baseline as sort of a conduit, uh, but eventually going towards either DeFi instruments or it could be other any other settlement mechanisms that one would see in a financial world. Right on. Uh, Kyle, Karthik, we are right at the end. So uh, if you could. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. guys are good. You, you guys can give your final, your final thoughts, John. Yeah, so just sort of to echo um, everyone's sentiment here, um, the community is amazing. Uh, we're starting to see some real use cases come forward from, from Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies that make a lot of sense in terms of just their their day to day processes. They're they just they're boring, but they use baseline, and that's exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, I would say uh, join the community uh, and get involved. It's a great place. Thanks for having me here. Thanks, Kyle Carthy. Uh, uh, it's been a Great community, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's always a very riveting to see uh, so much progress that has been made just in about a month to two since it's gone since it's gone into the public domain. So uh, yeah, ha happy about the progress, and we think we should continue to push. If there's one thing I would like to focus on. I would say probably something that you brought up in the past was around addressing CISOs issues that CISOs might have from a baseline point of view. Yeah, I think that would be a, a, a really powerful thing is to have uh, you know more. We we uh, we have several CISOs that are already involved, and it would be good to have more so that we are always um, whenever you know they say uh, the way to do security right is to bake it in from the beginning. Um, and I'll I'll just say for myself that I'd like to see a, now a more a progression of um, company at every platform saying, oh yes, Mongo, we are now one click baselineable. DocuSign, oh, yes, we are now one-click baselineable, right? The product is their product, SAP, Dynamics, et cetera. So the consensus uh, Codify and uh, Pegasus and, um, and Infura, uh, you know, hey, yeah, we, we, we play a role in baseline. So those are the kinds of companies I'd love to see, uh, any system of record. Um, with that, uh, Kyle, I think we'll turn it back over to you. Awesome. Um, uh, please uh, please join the uh, you know, baseline-protocol.org. It's 
And it's really easy to get involved. Just get on the Slack and uh, start kicking in. Right on. Well, thank you very much, John and everybody. We're, we're super excited that uh, we were able to kind of talk through this this next session of, of what it is to, to baseline um, and, and the methodology, the framework, and, and everything that's going to become um, how we move into this next era, next era of bringing uh, mainnet to the enterprise. And so a, a quick shout out to each and every one of you and all that you're doing uh, as well at Provide, at Lime, at Envision, uh, and uh, EY Consensus, Baseline, and Unibright uh, as well. We're super appreciative of all that you guys shared. So thank you very much.